This site is pretty much in the middle of nowhere. We're a seven hour drive from Phoenix. It's not really close to anywhere. The landscape driving up here, it's stark. To the untrained eye, it, it looks like, you know, how could anything live here? Pacoon Springs is one of the biggest springs on the Arizona Strip. It's part of the Mojave Desert. The Mojave Desert is the driest desert in the United States. The story of the relic leopard frog's existence in Arizona is complicated. Truth is, they only exist in the United States, specifically in the desert southwest. To make things more complicated, they were actually thought to be extinct in the 1950s. The species is imperiled because of mostly loss of habitat and competition and predation from non-native species. Actually, the species was thought to be extinct until 1991, it was rediscovered. And at that time, partners involved in their conservation found six populations that were still extant. Extant, as in surviving or still in existence. Coming down into Pacoon Basin, you see that here is this oasis in the middle of nowhere. You've got this huge green oasis of trees, willow trees, cottonwoods, you know, cattails, and you can see how important water is to the desert. Frogs, being that they have sensitive skin, they can be indicator species for the health of a watershed. If you have healthy water, you've got frogs. The relic leopard frog is uniquely evolved for these spring habitats here in the Mojave Desert. Jeff Yeager, associate faculty at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, and Dr. Dave Bradford, who was working for the Environmental Protection Agency, came across new populations of relic leopard frogs in the 90s as they were looking for toads. And while we were searching for red spotted toads in Black Canyon, we ran into populations of these frogs and, and I was asking, what are these things? And he goes, I think they're relic leopard frogs. Turns out nobody really knew, but there was a genetic data set kicking around in our lab. And so um, I collected some more samples and started expanding that data set and eventually wrote a paper that uh, identified these frogs along the Colorado River and into the Virgin River as the relic leopard frog. All of the partners that are involved in the conservation of the relic leopard frog, which include Arizona Game and Fish, Bureau of Land Management, National Park Service, University of Nevada, Las Vegas, um, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, many, many other partners got together and decided to do some habitat reconnaissance in the areas within their historic distribution. Because of this effort, the relic leopard frog is slowly returning to natural spring areas and washes in the Mojave Desert with the help of biologists, specifically in the far northwest corner of Arizona. The habitat that we have here on the Arizona Strip is really, really good for the species. Here we have this really awesome spring system. We've got hot springs coming down into a nice riffle, you know, channel going into the wash, draining into the Colorado River. The habitat right here was actually made specifically for bats. When you create habitat for bats, you're creating habitat for other wildlife to, to use that water. Across the range of the species, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah, there are only 22 sites that are occupied by relic leopard frogs. For the relic leopard frog to succeed in the Arizona Strip, two things needed to happen. In 2010, Arizona Game and Fish and all of the other conservation partners decided that this would actually be really good habitat if it could be restored back to its natural function, have the spring run here, you know, remove the pond, and if we could get rid of bullfrogs. And so in 2010, that's when we started doing the bullfrog removal. We've removed more than 1,500 bullfrogs from this site. And so the last three years, we've been monitoring just to make sure that there aren't bullfrogs here. So the last bullfrog was removed in 2019. Guys. Finally, their day had come. So that must be it. Okay. okay. After 12 years of waiting, preparing the site, and now we can finally release the animals and try to establish population. Frogs, tadpoles, and metamorphs, raised and nurtured at UNLV, were finally making the trip to the promised land. Thanks to the research, hard work, and the determination of the conservation groups overseeing the relic leopard frog project on the Arizona Strip, Pacoon Springs welcomed its new residents in April of 2022. All of the partners involved in relic leopard frog conservation came out here to celebrate the fact that we've got this restored habitat, we've got this nice functioning 
spring run habitat that's bullfrog free and you know really 12 years in the making and so we were able to release 250 juvenile relic leopard frogs as well as tadpoles. Prior to releasing a second army of frogs, a night survey helps determine how the new residents are settling in. This is essentially the start of the spring run. We're looking for tadpoles. Frogs could be on the bottom too, but, but really it's the tadpoles that are going to be in that sediment. This was recontoured in 2016 by the Bureau of Land Management and the National Park Service um, as part of the large-scale habitat restoration project. This is one that was released about six weeks ago back um, at the end of April. To find 12 frogs with, you know, not very much effort here is a good sign that they've had survival, at least in the last, you know, two months since they were released here. And these frogs look good. They're healthy-looking frogs. Um, they've got some nice... Um, body fat on them. It looks like they're getting good diet. They're feeding on the abundant invertebrates that we've got, both terrestrial invertebrates and aquatic invertebrates. On the second trip to Pacoon Springs, Audrey and crew added more adult frogs. Having about 100 frogs here that we're releasing that are adult size allows for a diversity of life stages and size classes, and that's really going to help bolster their chances of survival. There is great hope for Pacoon Springs, since the habitat is ideal for relic leopard frogs, and because Arizona's other sites have produced robust populations. This is potentially a really good site. It's large, it's got a lot of habitat, uh, there's a level of disturbance here associated with potential flash floods that come down the drainage. There's still some burrows around, and so that intermediate level of disturbance is good for relic leopard frogs. And so I'm really encouraged. I think this is going to be a good site. This was a lot of work. It was many, many agencies coming together to do this restoration work. Um, not just the habitat, the water, the recontouring of the land, but also the bullfrog removal. The fact that we were all able to come together for this one purpose is, is really amazing. <laughs>